Good morning. Time for the bizarre files. Then I'll be right with you. Brought to you this morning by Dunkin' Donuts. I did that she would give what the, the intruder, a, a, intruder a fright. So. All right. Just wanted to uh, throw this out real quick. Uh, obviously, I. Uh, some people would say, oh, we got a case of the Mondays. It's not a case of the Mondays. It's a case of being who I am, what I have. And with that mind, hang on a second. Uh, all right, just had to take care of some business right quick. Uh, hope I'm not too loud. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I hope I'm loud enough to drown out.
to scream in silence. Sometimes we have to break our own silence because silence can mean a lot of things. And it's not until we open our mouths and crack that egg can we get that omelet made. Feel me? <laughs> uh, I know there's times when I wake up happy. Uh, and it doesn't have to be the weekend. It doesn't have to be the week. There's times when I wake up on the weekend unhappy. And it's not because of what has to be done that weekend or that day or you know, maybe events that I'm not looking forward to. And I just wake up and right off the bat, nope, not having it. And uh, to those of you who may know the feeling, would you rather wake up happy work at maintaining that level all day or would you rather wake up and either not really be you know still kind of on the fence or maybe wake up in a less than happy mood and then look forward to the day getting better it sounds kind of stupid when I when I hear it coming out of my face, but some people look at it that way. There's times when I get up and I'm grumpy or I'm unhappy, and then thankfully one of the first things that come to my mind is, all right, you just got up. This is the beginning. This is the start to your day, the rest of your day. Um, there's still more hours to come. So, you know, look forward to, caught you looking, Look forward to what uh, you know is going to happen in the day and how can you uh, make it happy? How can you make it work for you? How can you, uh, what can you do to increase your own happiness? Because let's be honest, it's not up to anybody else uh, whether we're happy or not. That's, that's up to us. Um, nobody can uh, dictate, nobody else can dictate how you feel. We should never allow other people to dictate how we feel about anything. Um, unless you're just flat out wrong, like a sociopath. Like, Killing people is wrong? I don't feel that way. Yeah, it doesn't change because <laughs> you're wrong. So, And it can be a daunting task. Another question. Do you feel that many of what uh, many of these issues and problems that a lot of us are facing in the last 30 to 40 years have been man-made whether it's something in the water whether it's uh, you know, because of so much in the air I'm not just talking about pollution you know, smog, filth, things of that nature I'm talking Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, you know, radio signals, all sorts of stuff. I know it sounds kind of conspiracy theory-ish, but I'm just wondering, you know, because you can only advance, make so many advancements somewhere blindly as we have for so many years before it starts to affect people, many people. I'm talking to my grandmother, who I really need to couple years ago and said, you know, when I was your age, we didn't have all these problems. You didn't have this. You didn't have that. Now, granted, a lot wasn't discovered. A lot wasn't diagnosed. I mean, when I was in uh, first grade, it was, you know, he's daydreaming. He's daydreaming. Spend too much time daydreaming. It's, well, now we know. I wasn't daydreaming. I had attention deficit disorder. <laughs> but we didn't know it then. So I got punished, I got yelled at, I got you know, grounded, I got beatings, I got F's, and I may not have gotten any F's, but it was, you know, it was close. But we didn't know it then. Thankfully we do now, because I can see it in my children, and help them as far as I can. And I need a new mug, this thing doesn't keep coffee hot for diddly. Um, 
Yeah, so do you think that uh, a lot of what we're, we're experiencing, uh, granted it's, it's you know, an inherited thing, mental illness, but it also has to start somewhere too. Um, those who know my family, uh, not just myself, my wife, my children, but uh, you know, my parents, or if you've known my childhood, let me say that, um, it's no surprise that there's a little bit of this on, uh, I'm going to say it, both sides of my family. It's just how it is. So, I'd like to know what, uh, what y'all think. Of course, I could go around asking individual folks, but I can reach more folks this way, and everybody can get their, their say in without me walking up to somebody with a microphone in their face or a notepad and, you know, excuse me, sir, do you have a moment to answer a few questions, ma'am or sir? Yeah. So, questions with that, yeah. Uh, in a brief exchange with a friend on, on Facebook last night, uh, she had posted something that hit, uh, hit the nail right on the head with where, uh, how I feel, where I've been, my wife deals with or, or says you know, on a semi-regular basis, um, posted red, what the hell, just as soon as I uh, get things taken care of uh, financially, something's got to come up, now it looks like I might need uh, four new tires on my car, ASAP. So I responded, yep, I know exactly how you feel. Um, you know, it, it always seems like it's always something, no matter what we do. <coughs> Excuse me. We seem to be stuck in this never-ending cycle. She says, exactly. You know, we do and do and do, and if we are able to put anything aside for emergencies or what have you, the emergencies that pop up would be somebody else's emergencies. But for us, it's our, you know, almost every day. It's our, you know, this week or that week. I said, yeah, I understand that. I call that my Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. And then it doesn't leave anything to put aside to, to get ahead. And I said, I, I understand that. What was refreshing to read coming from somebody else was that, especially somebody who's had a, uh, you know, a stumble in their, in their times as I have, and uh, you know, a realization of things, uh, she says, you know, but I really shouldn't complain because there are people, there's a lot more people out there who uh, can't manage, you know, we're getting by, so we're managing. There's a lot of people who can't manage with that, who don't know how to, and they fall apart financially, they fall apart emotionally, they fall apart mentally. The families uh, fall apart, and uh, you know that that's just a um, quick and uh, seemingly endless downward spiral, a cycle you can break. You know, if you're going down in the spiral, that's even harder. So, that, you know, why do you think when we flush the toilet, it doesn't just go, it goes, swirls. I'm doing this like you can see me. So, but it was nice to see uh, somebody who's a uh, you know, person still in their 30s understanding that, yeah, you know what, there's people out there that's got a hell of a lot worse. It's like a, uh, a picture I had read over the weekend. Keep in mind the life that you bitch and whine and complain and you know, say that you hate and you can't stand anymore it is a life that another person lots of people would li love to have in short it's not as bad as you think you might have it bad right now but somebody else has a hell of a lot worse always somebody who has a hell of a lot worse Take your, uh, I hit every red light on the way to work 
take your my truck has an, an oil leak and I still have another 15 20 miles to go to get to work and then the ride home before I can get anything uh, before I can top off this this thing uh, take your my truck is 17 years old and you know, I can barely afford to keep it on the road uh, because now I drive 300 miles a week to get to work uh, take your my coffee didn't stay hot in my mug and now it's kind of kind of warmish you know, take all that stupid shit, put it in a sack, you know, light that sack on fire and toss it over the bridge, you know, because in the long run, shit, in the short run, none of that shit matters, man. What, am I going to, oh, my day's ruined because my coffee sucked. Nah, I ain't ruined. Come on now. Don't be so shallow, Hal. <laughs> I think I've covered uh, a lot of what I uh, wanted to get off my chest this morning. Not necessarily get off my chest, but to throw out there and uh, you know, give us something to think about, perhaps. Think about her. <laughs> yeah. I'm also thinking about all the damn notifications that I've been getting since I got up. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming to a head that I need to tackle. And the part of that that really chaps my butt is that um, it's not all up to me. Um, one thing in particular and it's all time sensitive. It's coming down to the wire here and I'm waiting to get paperwork filled out from uh, my son's neurologist. Now, when we go through uh, in an FMLA process, they send the paperwork to the doctor. Well, my wife was finally able to get a hold of the doctor's personal secretary and she's looking up everything. She's, well, I see it. Why is it scanned into the system? So they've had the paperwork, but it was uh, scanned into the system, she says. So it never came across his desk. It never came across his eyes. And she's saying, okay, well, I'll make sure these get faxed back to, uh, to where it came from. Okay, UPS. All right. And she's one of these people who speaks real fast and it's just boom, 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 boom. And hangs up with my wife. And my wife's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just going to fax it back to where they came from. UPS. Why are you faxing it back to UPS? Why don't you fax it back to the number that's on the sheet that says fax these back to so and so? You know, your your doctor's office, your your secretary. I think you know you work at Children's Hospital. I'm pretty certain you know the, the protocol for uh, you know where shit gets faxed back to. Now we're coming down to like the last couple days to get this stuff done. My wife, she doesn't have a desk job. I don't have a desk job. And, you know, it's not like we have an office where we can sit there and take care of this stuff throughout the day. No, we can't. And the times that we do have to take care of these things is called the weekend. And nobody around, you know, on the weekends to, to, uh, to do these things.
guess I'll wrap up today's. Um, yeah. Um, down. <laughs> Low. Yeah, it wasn't for a while, then. Like five, ten minutes ago. Hey, here it comes. You're gonna feel shitty again. But I know it's only temporary because I only want it to be temporary. And I'll. You know, if it's not temporary and it's a little bit long, it's, it's not gonna be permanent. <laughs> it just. No. Nah. I uh, put some of my weight back on. But I think what a lot of what I'm going through right now is uh, my oldest moving out is has hit me um, harder and in a completely different uh, I should say in an, in 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 unexpected fashion and you know it, it's such a mi mix of emotions because. She's where she needs to be. She's where she wants to be. She's doing what she wants to do. She's doing already more than what she's ever expected she'd be doing there because they like what she's done so far. And she has a radio show already. Less than two months in college. Radio show. I've been trying to get on the damn air for 20 years now. But, you know. I see it in, in the four of us when we go out places. Um, we went to Friendly's the other day. He said, oh, hi. Uh, just four? Four today? And after all these years, I'm so used to saying five. And I'm like, no, five. And I'm looking around like, oh, 